All right. So a very very good evening to all of you. Right from the you know the cold, the North India, particularly the Delhi. So I can't say a warm good evening. So it's a very cold good evening for at least uh, people out here. You know, in Delhi and nearby areas. I'm Dr. Tushar Mehta. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and faculty of uh, orthopedics at Dams. And uh, you know, today the purpose of this uh, snippet, today the purpose of this session is to talk about a very basic topic. I want all those people who are attending Nupu Rakshi, Sana Swapan Moe, Satakshi, Sara, nice names by the way. So I want all of you to understand the basics of this very important topic of orthopedics that is about fracture healing. So we'll talk about uh, fracture healing, you know, what are the steps and how is the fracture healing important for all of us. What is a fracture? We all know a break in the continuity of the bone, a breach in the continuity of the bone is called as fracture. Now, when a fracture starts healing, there are two aspects of it. One is the biological healing, one is the mechanical healing. First, we will talk about the biological fracture healing. Now, students, when we talk about the biological fracture healing, I want all of you to understand very clearly a couple of things. Biological healing is what the biology is doing, the nature, almighty, whatever you want to say, you can call it, is doing. Now, this is one fracture fragment. This is another fracture fragment. The bone is broken into two parts. There's a medullary artery disrupted, cortical artery disrupted, periosteal artery disrupted, all arteries disrupted. Now, when all arteries are disrupted, the first thing that is going to happen is there will be collection of a significant blood inside the fracture surface. Now, the significant collection of the blood, I'm sure we all know that collection of the blood is what is called as hematoma. So, when I say hematoma, that simply means that the biological fracture healing starts with certain steps, out of which the first step is always formation of the first step is always formation of fracture hematoma. <clears throat> now, I'll tell you a very interesting point. Hematoma can be made maybe within a day, maybe two, maybe five. But one thing is for sure that hematoma is made within seven days. That means 110% sure and final that this hematoma is made within one week. Okay, so hematoma is made within one week. That's the first step of the fracture healing. Congratulations. Now the bigger question arises that why you have to have formation of hematoma. In other words, how hematoma is important, I'll tell you. There is something called as a pathology, second year, MBBS, general pathology, chapter, inflammation, heading if you remember, chemical mediators of inflammation, used to come as a short note if you remember. Guys, you remember prostaglandins, prostacyclins, leukotrienes, interleukins, arachidonic acid, metabolites, COX pathway, LOX pathway, PDGF, TGF, IGF. All those chemical mediators of inflammation will be brought to this particular site by this wonderful hematoma. So in other words, I would like to say that this fracture hematoma acts as a chemotactic stimulus for all those chemical mediators of inflammation to come at the fracture site and start what? Inflammation. So the second step is for sure inflammation. So the second step is for sure inflammation. Now when I say inflammation, that is essentially divided into two parts because I know by the virtue of your knowledge of pathology you are aware of it. When I say inflammation that is divided into two parts. One is the cellular proliferation. Second thing is the neovascularization. Now try to understand, okay, try to understand that you know cells will start proliferating. <clears throat> So osteoblast, osteocyte, chondrocytes, chondroblast, histiocytes, all these cells will, cells will start proliferating. The vessels which were disrupted, 
the cortical medullary periosteal artery which was disrupted they will again start making themselves so there will be neovascularization so this is something that is going to happen in inflammation and technically if i may say it starts at the beginning of second week and it continues till third week <coughs> it starts at the beginning of second week and it continues till third week so inflammation is around you know uh, for hematoma you see within one week and then it is followed by inflammation that is from second week to third week which has two important concepts now you have to understand why one more point of view that in step two there will be cellular proliferation of course there will be cellular proliferation now when we talk about cellular proliferation i told you all the cells will multiply osteocyte osteoblast chondrocyte hysterocyte all the cells i want to bring this to your knowledge that chondrocytes have got the fastest multiplication rate are you understanding i want to bring this to your knowledge that chondrocytes have got the fastest multiplication rate now when chondrocytes have got the fastest multiplication rate definitely they are going to multiply and they are going to form what simple na no? cartilage so they will immediately fill this entire area with what cartilage so my dear students technically what is happening there is formation of what cartilage so can i say the third step as can i label the third step as chondrogenesis <clears throat> can i say the third stage as or the third step as chondrogenesis yes i can so chondro means cartilage genesis means formation so in the third step there will be chondrogenesis there will be formation of cartilage <clears throat> now when this cartilage is made or this chondrogenesis happens of course it is going to happen at the third week and from third week onwards what is formed here is something which is very interesting and important for you that is what is called as soft callus now guys please get this thing straight into your head that what is callus it's an mcq but what it is callus is the first all right callus is the first visible <coughs> X-ray sign of fracture union. Callus is the first visible X-ray sign of fracture union. I mean, a radiologist gets to know earlier about callus than we clinicians. Number one, number two. Some of you might have a doubt in your head that sir, if there is formation of cartilage, how can you see on an X-ray? Because cartilage cannot be seen on an X-ray. Better this cartilage. I agree, but this cartilage has few specks of calcification also. It has few specks of calcification also, and that is something which is visible on an X-ray as if something is sticking, something is acting like a fibula to bind the two fracture fragments together. So this is what I want you people to understand. Now you have a lot of cartilage over there, which is soft callus and MCQ. now i have to tell you something that in orthopedics there is only one canon there is only one law one rule <coughs> bone ke badle bone we want bone in place of bone we are bone and blood they are always replaced by bone and blood so bone ke badle bone so i went to the cartilage and I told cartilage that listen hey cartilage i don't like you number one number two i don't need you she said you don't like me you don't need me what does that mean i said i don't like you i don't need you that means that Okay, you have been formed. Okay, but I don't want you. I want bone here. Cartilage said, "Sir, don't worry and don't get angry. I can solve this." I said, "How?" She said, "Sir, you can make bone inside me." Inside? She said, "Yes." I said, "Inside you?" She said, "I am the cartilage, so chondral." I said, "Can I make bone?" She said, "Yes." That is what is called as bone formation ossification. So the fourth step is endochondral ossification, also called as consolidation. Some of you might be doubting, why am I calling it a consolidation? Because this soft callus is now going to get consolidated into what hard callus? The soft callus is going to get consolidated into what hard callus? and this hard callus which will be <coughs> made here is not any you know uh, soft kind of a thing it is i would say a kind of a woven bone if i may summarize 
I would like to summarize it as a woven bone. Now when I say woven bone, what does that mean? I want this to be clear to you as well that this is like a woven bone. So this is like a woven bone. You know where the osteoid is interlacing with each other. Are you able to understand my point? And my dear students, please remember that this occurs at 4th to 6th week precisely. And not only that, I want you to remember that this is the first clinical, this is the first clinical stage. This is the first clinical stage of fracture healing. Or you can say this is the first clinical sign of fracture healing. An orthopedic surgeon gets to know about this you know, an orthopedic surgeon gets to know about this only when the heart callus or woven bone is found. That's the first clinical point when we say that yes, fracture healing has happened. Clear? Now, I told you in orthopedics we have a law bone ke badle bone. So, you might be wondering that, sir, you have got bone in place or bone. No, we haven't. I don't want this uh, woven bone. Why? Because the bone which was fractured was not woven bone. The bone which was fractured was precisely the bone which was fractured was precisely lamellar bone. And now I want all of you to remember that I spoke to Almighty, the biology which is healing it, the nature which is healing it, and I asked uh, Almighty Biology Nature, I said, you know, I want your help. He said, yes, tell me. I said, this is a woven bone that has been found. He said, yes. I said, this is a lamellar bone that I want. He said, yes. So I said, I want you to convert this woven bone to lamellar bone. Almighty said that, you know, I made you as a model. I said, yes, totally agree. Almighty said that you broke your model. You broke your model, you broke your bone. I said, yes. He said, now you want me to remodel you. I said, yes. Almighty said, don't worry, I will remodel you. And that is why the last time is what is called as remodel. I said, oh, so now I understand that the last step is probably conversion of one bone into lamellar bone. They said, yes, that is precisely what is remodeling. <clears throat> I said, that's a fantastic thing, but who's going to do that? They said, don't worry, it is going to be done by a cell. That is what is called as osteoclast. I said, what? Osteoclast? They've got a bad reputation. They do resorption. They eat away the bone. Almighty said, no, 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 no. Cell achha hai bura nahi hota, halat achha hai bura hota. Insan achha hai bura nahi hota, halat, you know, man is not good or bad, it's the circumstances. So similarly, a cell is not good or bad, it is the circumstances. So circumstances are like that, that in certain patients, osteoclast is leading to a resorption, thereby leading to a lot of eating of the bone, which is bad, but here it is good for you. So this is the last type of fracture healing that is called as remodeling, which is conversion of one bone to lamellar bone. <coughs> Normally it takes two, two to three years. Normally it takes around two to three years, which I want all of you to understand and please remember this forever. So these are some essential basic steps. These are some essential basic steps of fracture healing which I think, you know, we all should remember. <clears throat> now, after these essential <clears throat> basic steps of fracture healing, I want you to understand one more thing, that there is something which is called as a mechanical fracture healing. Now, this is something that not many people understand in one go. The biological fracture healing is some, something that the nature does, the Almighty does, God does. But mechanical fracture healing is something that we do. Why are we there? If everything has to be done by the biology, then what is the role of an orthopedic surgeon? You understanding my point? So now I'm trying to tell you what an orthopedic surgeon does. That is mechanical fracture healing. So there are two types of healing. One is called as, this is a little tough one to get. So please pay attention. One is called as the primary healing, secondary, then there you have the secondary healing. Primary is also called as direct healing. <coughs> secondary is called as indirect healing. I will tell you, don't worry. Let us say for example, somebody has had a fracture just about an hour ago, right? brought to the hospital, admitted, brought to the hospital, admitted, let's operate. In surgery, I decide that I want to put up a plate. So what I'll do is, 
there is a skin, there is a superficial fascia, the deep fascia, the muscle, the artery, vein, nerve, vessel, capillary, arterial. So what I will do is, I will give an incision. Skin is cut, fascia is cut, muscle is cut. I will reflect and dissect the artery, nerve, vein, vessel. Okay, I will reach the bone. When I will reach the bone, I will bring the two fragments together. I will bring the two fragments together. Then what I will do is, when I will, I am bringing those two fragments together. <clears throat> definitely, I am, you know, draining and washing and aspirating. You know, you have a you have a suction always in the hand. Like I am the surgeon, there is an assistant. He is holding a retractor or probably a suction. So he is sucking that area. We are draining that area, sucking that area. So technically, the blood which is supposed to get accumulated in the fracture site to make a hematoma is all sucked out. Okay. <clears throat> And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a plate and in that plate, definitely I'm going to put the screws. <coughs> I have a question for you. Do you think that during this cutting of skin, superficial ratio, team ratio, muscle tissue, artery, nerve, muscle, capillary, arterial, bringing the two fragments together, putting a plate, <coughs> fixing it with screws, do you think that is in this entire concept? Is there any scope for the blood to accumulate inside the fracture surface? No. Do you think will there be any formation of hematoma? No. Do you think will there be any formation of uh, soft callus, hard callus, remodeling? So technically, if I say, why it is called primary healing or direct healing? Because who is the primary person here? Yours obediently, truly. Why it is called direct healing? Because it is done directly by yours truly. <coughs> I don't want to boast about it, it sounds a little pompish, but I'm just giving you a certain example and anecdote so that you remember it better. When we orthopedic surgeons, we do a plating, we come outside the OT, we look up to the almighty, the nature, and we are like, dude, just relax. There are fracture as there are high loading. So that means the union of the fracture is on me. You can relax. So that means no biology involved no callus formation direct healing primary healing classical example whenever you do a plating on the contrary <coughs> there's a fracture closed fracture when i say closed fracture that means overlying skin tissue fascia everything is closed <coughs> no incision no nothing all you do is you just apply a plaster cast when you apply a plaster cast, are you giving the are you giving the space for hematoma to made? Yes. Followed by blah 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 blah. Yes. Let us say if there is a fracture surface like this, and what I do is <coughs> I'm not exposing the fracture surface. This is the fracture surface. I'm not exposing the fracture surface. Rather, I'm putting a rod from proximal fragment crossing the surface into the distal fragment. Just a simple rod. So, do you think I'm opening the fracture site? I'm not opening the fracture site. Either trauma has not opened the fracture site, even I have not opened the fracture site. No one has opened the fracture site. So, when no one opens the fracture site, then it means you are dealing in a closed way. <clears throat> so, all the steps will be followed. Yes. So, biology will be involved. Yes. Callus formation will be there. Yes. Classical example, when you apply POP cast to treat a fracture or when you do a uh, nailing to treat a fracture. <coughs> so this is what I want you to remember. So there's a primary healing, there's a secondary healing. Do we understand this? There's a primary healing, there's a secondary healing. So this is a basic fundamental of a <coughs> primary and a secondary healing. In secondary healing, with the mobile, I'll give an anecdote, like we fix a, a fracture with a nail or we apply a POP cast. So whenever we come out of the OT, you can understand it like this, that, you know, with, with very, with very, you know, uh, teary eyes, we look up to the Almighty and we're like, sir, I have done my part, but please be there. Huh? Almighty says, oh, so cute. Don't worry. We are there for you. So I hope you understand the gist of both the sorts of healing. One is the biological healing, one is the mechanical healing. So combined way, you know, we heal the fracture. All right, any questions about fracture healing that anybody would want to ask? Please let me know.
any questions that anybody would want to ask about the biological healing or the mechanical healing? Uh, there is no time limit for uh, mechanical healing. This will follow the same course. This will follow the same course. The time duration will be same as biological healing. <clears throat> now, this is very interesting. There is This is very interesting. Swapan May has asked me a question. Swapan May, I'll share something. I was in first year. Uh, say, of course, when I was in my first year, in the first couple of months, I read this topic. And one of my seniors in my second month or end of first month, he showed me a fracture where there was a plate. And he told me that, you know, he assisted that surgery and he tightened the screws towards the end of the surgery and said, hmm, this see, I assisted this case. You know, what beautiful callus is being made. And I was like, in the library, day before yesterday, I was reading that when you do a plating, you hardly see any callus, but my senior is able to see callus. Either he is wrong or the textbook is wrong. More chances are he is wrong. So I asked one of the seniors. So he told me the same thing. So you have to understand that, you know, this is something very important for all of us to understand that when we do a plating, there is no possibility of any callus formation, but there is no time duration. Normally it is around two, 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 two and a half months. You know, Saurav has asked me a question, why no callus? I told you that when you put a plate and you put a screw, when you put a plate, and a screw, you know, the fracture fragments are united with each other and when you're putting a plate, you expose that entire area, you drain that entire thing out, you suck that entire thing out, so the blood which is supposed to get accumulated over there to make a fracture hematoma as the first ever fracture healing, that won't happen. So, is that clear? Uh, kneeling, we are not opening the fracture side, it's just a nail passing through. It's a blind procedure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the tip, nail ka tip kitna, only one centimeter, two centimeter. So it is just crossing the fracture side. <coughs> we are not opening the fracture side. I told you, we are, we put a nail from here. We put a nail from proximal to distal. We don't put a nail through the fracture surface. We are putting it from the proximal fragment of the bone. I hope that makes some sense to you. Uh, Pratik Maheshwari, what is the mechanism of action of nailing? Just I told you. Just I told you, the mechanism of action of kneeling is to avoid the rotational component. See, whenever there is a fracture, there are three possibilities. A, it can move anteroposterior, it can move mediolateral or it can rotate. There are three instability, anteroposterior, mediolateral and rotation. So when you put a nail and you fix it with screws, when you put a nail and you fix it with screws, now, do you think that this nail can allow it to go mediolateral? No. When you fix the nail also with screws, do you think it can go anteroposterior? No. It can rotate? No. So, all the three instabilities are dealt with nailing. But yes, there is no interference with the biology since you are not opening up the fracture site. So, therefore, You are, Nupur, you are asking me example of bone fracture. I am telling you that wherever you put a plate, let us say, for example, fracture shaft of humerus, usually plating is done. At the same time, fracture shaft of tibia, fracture shaft of femur, fracture of the proximal and distal end of the long bones. So here usually... Sorry. Here usually kneeling is done. But yes, if there is a fracture of the proximal and distal ends, there we do plating itself. <laughs> this is like this. Sandesh, there is nothing like that. But yes, I would say that in my clinical, there is no book which says which heals faster. 
बट इन माई एक्सपीरियंस इन डायरेक्ट हील्स फास्टर बुक नहीं बोलती है मैं बोलता हूँ मेरी कोई सुनता नहीं है तुम सुन रहे हो बहुत बड़ी बात है ये इज दैट क्लियर टू यू डन एवरी वन सो दिस इज अ वेरी बेसिक टॉपिक वेरी एसेंशियल टॉपिक not only it contributes to a concept but it contributes to a lot of mcqs also and that is you know what i have been wanting to teach you i didn't want to go you know extra begin on telling you some osteo sarcoma or ewing sarcoma but i just wanted that you know you should know the basic fundamental of how a fracture heals and what are the two aspects normally in medical college in orthopedic lectures they teach uh, precisely the the biological healing i want you to take up mechanical healing today as well Okay, now there is one question that has been asked by one person. What is the role of external fixator then? See, you have to understand that somebody has met with a fracture. Now, unfortunately, his overlying skin is disrupted. So this part has been crushed. It is contaminated fracture. It is for sure an open fracture which is having you know all the contamination. So in contamination, you cannot put a plate. You cannot put a nail. You cannot put a plaster. There is a wound, na? There is a wound. There is a skin defect of five into four centimeter. so in that scenario but still you have to hold the fracture so what you do is you put one shan spin here <clears throat> the name is shan spin you put another shan spin here you put another shan spin here you put another shan spin here then on the top of these shan shan spins you connect certain clamps those clamps have got a hole and then you can connect those holes with a universal tubular rod so what i have made you understand universal tubular rod now what i made you understand is that we are trying to fix the fracture yes but the fixation modality that is a universal tubular rod whether that is an internal fixator or an external fixator whether that is inside the skin or outside the skin outside the skin the the terminology of external fixator or internal fixator is with respect to what skin it is not with respect to bone many people think it is with respect to bone within the bone internal fixator outside the bone external fixator are nahi boss plate is what internal fixator external fixator plate is outside the bone but still it is internal fixator because it is internal to what skin so external fixator or we call as x fix it is important precisely and mainly in open fracture it is a workhorse of an open fracture the tool of an orthopedic surgeon in managing an open fracture <coughs> good questions very good questions all right any other question chal so i think that makes some sense to you and i hope that ignites a little bit of orthopedics in you <clears throat> well uh, you know the dams has come up with this ultimate uh live app based course where as i have said earlier also that we will not be giving you certain pre recorded uh, lectures because i feel that as you know somewhere down the line leading to a lot of rote learning and, and people are just trying to you know students are trying to you know just you know in order to finish the syllabus they try to mug up as much as they can so we want to make the platform uh, interactive two way uh, so that's why we have come up with a live app based course in 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 case if you cannot uh, you know access any of the uh, face to face centers of dams or satellite centers and you are posted at a place where you think it is difficult for you to move as i said earlier that you know people say that if you have the will you have the way i've always modified this in the way that if you have the will we have the way so if you have the will to study with us and we have the way we'll come to your mobile we are already there on your mobile and e-medicos has been doing uh, you know tremendous uh, for a long time now so we will be doing this live app based course it's already started you can log on to that live app based course if you still find any issue uh, you can contact me on facebook but i would prefer if you can contact me on instagram for any other query if you want any sort of clearance that you know what all subjects will be given uh, how many batches and how many years and you 
Tell me anything you ask me, anything I'll arrange a call back. I can speak to you as well over voice messages. Uh, if you still feel that there is any confusion, you can leave a WhatsApp to me. I will try to answer it uh, as early as possible. If you have any queries about this course, and uh, I think this is going to be a table turner for many people who are into their you know, uh, not ex very accessible areas. And if you want to join, then there is a code also that you can use. It will give you a discount of I think around 10%. So it's a 10% referral code that you can use. But anyways, I mean, the bottom line remains the same that if you have any doubt first, let me know i'll clear all your doubts and then probably you know we can come to a conclusion that whether we want this or not and uh, uh, i will be surely taking you under the mentorship program as well so all the best to all of you thank you so much and uh, have a, a great evening all the best take care of your family your loved ones wear your mask take care of all the social precautions that you're supposed to take vaccine is i it seems as if it is around the corner at least for the healthcare people but till then, we're not supposed to commit any mistake. Those who have been affected, please take care. Post-COVID fatigue is there. Uh, don't let it affect you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.